is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next two hours, the insane Daryl Wayne and I are going to take a look at a wide variety of health issues that touch each and every one of us. For example, during hour two, we're going to talk about health and astrology. Uh, We're also going to take a look at WTF. All right, get that dirty thoughts out of your mind. Working the Future, name of the uh, the book, and we'll be talking with Whitney uh, Vosberg about that during hour two. Uh, Also, this hour, we'll talk about uh, life cycles uh, with Robert Clancy, and we'll talk with Kenneth Todd Nelson, who's a millennial who has suffered with breast cancer. I might uh, add that uh, Kenneth is a guy. Uh, very rare, and we will be talking with Kenneth this hour. We're going to start by talking about money. Money makes the world go round, go, uh, world go round. Now I'm singing on the air. Oh, boy. Uh, another uh, Broadway um, thing or something. Money, money, money from uh, Cabaret. We go to uh, West Los Angeles. We're going to spend some time uh, with uh, a young lady who's written a book, uh, uh, her name is uh, Rebecca Whitman, and uh, we welcome you to Late Night Health, Rebecca. Thank you so much, Mark and Daryl. I'm excited to be on the air with you. Well, I'm really, really curious. Is there a correlation, do you think, between health and wealth? Or, as yeah. I believe you've said, health is the new wealth. Right. Well, those are actually two different questions. I believe health is the new wealth because... You can have all the money in the world, but if you're bedridden and and sick and you can't go out to enjoy your life, then what is it worth? So I really believe in your guys' mission and your show because your health is your number one resource. And if you have your health, anything's possible. Um, And as far as the correlation between health and wealth, my book is all about work-life balance, and I divide life into seven areas. And when you have all seven areas in balance, you can make six figures or more. And health is is one of the foundational areas. It starts with your spiritual practice, and then right after that is is health. So yeah, I think it's really important. How did how did this come to you? I mean, did you um, have a financial setback? Did you have a health setback? You know, I've always been into health and fitness. I was a nationally ranked tennis player. Uh, By the time I was 14, I was ranked 40th in the country. I played tennis for Princeton University. I've always been into health and fitness. Uh, My first job out of college was selling uh, nutritional supplements (laughs) in, uh, in network marketing. So the two kind of combined in that company because even though the network marketing company ultimately went out of business, I learned a lot of really great entrepreneurial and sales skills while also learning about uh, nutrition. So I think those two things that I learned in my 20s, you know, kind of created this lifestyle that I'm enjoying now and that I share in my book. You you mentioned, uh, you know, sales, okay? Mm -hmm. The number one, the number one four-letter word in this country, and I think through most of the Western world, is sell. Mm-hmm. If you Google uh, jobs at, that don't require selling, you get millions of them. And the you know uh, product sells itself, service sells itself. No selling required. Yet, if you dig deep, you have to sell. Is selling good, bad, or do you have not a, a thought on it? In my opinion, every conversation is sales because you're always convincing someone that your point of view is right. And we sell all the time. We, we recommend movies. We recommend restaurants. We recommend, you know, vacation destinations. So I think that it's natural and it's how we communicate. And if you actually find a product, good, or service that you believe in and that you sincerely want to help people, I, I think it's a very natural way to communicate, but I agree with you. I think there's some kind of a stigma around it, and, and people just have to get over that if they want to make uh, you know, a six-figure income working part-time. Um, obviously, you can't really do that in a corporate job because if you're working 40 hours a week, your, your income is capped by the time that you have. So 
this book, um, although it does, you know, even if you're making seven figures, you can benefit by the book because it's, like I said, it hits all seven areas of life and how to get them in balance. But if you really want to, you know, live the title of the book, you would have to be either in a sales job or some kind of a business or entrepreneurial opportunity. Were you uh, brought into the entrepreneurial world kicking and screaming? Had <laughs> after after graduating uh, Princeton, uh, did you uh, did you think, hmm, I'm going to get a nice corporate job, sit at a desk, and make that six figures, but work 85 hours a week? Well, what happened to me was I graduated from Princeton, and I thought the world was going to be my oyster, and I moved to New York City, and I wanted to start working on the corporate side of the entertainment industry, so I started to apply for jobs at networks, and they all told me, you know, there was a spot for me as an unpaid intern, or there was a spot for me in their mailroom, and I was like, whoa, whoa, did you not understand Princeton University? They're like, yeah, we understand, you know, you can make $5,000 a year working here, and I was like, I can't do that. So what happened was I answered an ad in the newspaper back when people still read the newspaper. You mean the thing that has like this? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Got it. And the ad said, circle me, and if you, you know, are willing to work this job, you can make $5,000 a month, you know, working part-time. And that's what led me to the wonderful world of sales. And, of course, at the same time, you're an actress uh, uh, having appeared in, I guess, TV and film? Yes, I'm an actress. I'm actually in a children's animated film that's out now called Lewis and the Aliens. And I co-star with Will Forte from Saturday Night Live and uh, Last Man on Earth. And I I still pursue it. So the great thing about making a six-figure income working part-time is I have time to pursue my passion. Which is acting? acting and fitness and spirituality got it Uh, our guest is rebecca whitman uh she's written a book how to earn a six-figure income working part-time and then uh also doing voiceover work and acting should that be your bent which would be what uh you know the insane daryl wayne and i would love to do (laughs) we just like to make a six-figure income doing the voiceover stuff or maybe even some on-camera work as well uh, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, at the end of each chapter, you have affirmations, which yeah. I find very interesting. What, in your opinion, is an affirmation, and do they really work? Yes, I really believe they work. Uh, my definition is an affirmation is your advertisement to the boundaries of the universe. And whatever you put out, especially with your thoughts and your words is going to come back and you'll and you'll have that as a life experience so if you're you know sitting at the bar drinking going oh my god i hate my job i hate my coworkers, i hate my spouse i don't know what to do pour me another drink you know you're going to just have that continued experience of not you know having a good experience with life and then with affirmations it is a mental discipline to kind of flip your mind so i think we can choose our own thoughts. That's, that's what separates us from animals. And we have to be as careful choosing our thoughts as we are choosing our food or our clothes or our mate. Um, but, yeah, if you really train your mind to use affirmations and think positively, I, I am living the fact that you can have good results. And since you guys are a health show, I would love to read after every chapter. There, there's three affirmations. And just give me a second here. You can ask me another question if you want, but I want to read to you the affirmations on health. We're going to do that during our next segment. How's that? We'll let you have time to to do that. Um, Rebecca, why do you think most people are unhappy in their jobs? I mean, the surveys show that I think it's over 80% of Americans who work, who make a good living. You know, they're an attorney. They're making half a million dollars a year and and stock bonuses and all these things. Yet, when they're asked that simple question, are you happy? They're not. Exactly. And um, I I like the slogan, happy is the new rich, because even like you said, (laughs) people who are making, you know, millions of dollars a year are unhappy. Um, I, 
I think it's because they don't have balance in their life. They are just single focused on work and in order to make money, they're neglecting their health, they're neglecting their family life, they're, they're neglecting their social, their romance, and they are feeling trapped. You know, as Freud said, most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Um, they're feeling trapped in their own lives and they're feeling like they have to chase the dollar bill like a like a gerbil on the on the gerbil wheel and they're never going to go anywhere and I I just think that life is more than you know work till you're 65 get a gold watch and a pension plan and then be put out to pasture and die like why wait till you're retired to have all the fun in this book I talk about how you can have fun and enjoy your life right now and also we have to point out that many people who do retire early at 65 who stop working drop dead there's a big yeah, percentage of those people point. who do it, right? Uh, our guest is Rebecca Whitman. Uh, her book, How to Earn a Six-Figure Income Working Part-Time, uh, it's available, and uh, you can find out how by going to LateNightHealth.com. We'll have uh, Rebecca's pretty picture up there. You can also go to uh, Amazon.com and get the book there. Uh, we will be back in just a couple of moments. We invite you to join us at Facebook because I know Rebecca's going to like us at Facebook. Aren't you, Rebecca? Uh, yes. Facebook.com slash Late Night Health Radio. Well, the insane Daryl Wayne and I return with Rebecca in just a couple of moments as Late Night Health takes to the air. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. Grief can be such a burden on your heart. It can be crippling to the point where you can't even seem to function. I've been there and I know that pain. But I also know you're not alone in that sorrow. We're all going through something in this life. Just as the sun has to face dark days, so do we. But the sun also has to shine again. Letting go of grief is not about letting go of your loved one. It's about making room in your heart for the love that you hold for them. If you have great grief, then you must have a very big heart too. It's time to fill your heart with that love and share it with everyone. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHelp.com. The latest from the greatest, the best in new music by classic rockers, with your host, the insane Daryl Wayne. This is Alice Cooper, and if Daryl Wayne is insane, what does that make me criminally insane? Stick around to find out. Many of the artist interviews for the latest from the greatest have been captured on audiobook. There is a volume one and volume two. Great information and conversations with people in the industry and people surrounded by the industry, and of course, the rock stars themselves. I'm the Reverend Al Green, and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne. And I said, Wayne Insane. You can find it on Amazon or Blackstone Audio. Search for the latest from the greatest from Daryl Wayne, D-A-R-R-E-L-L-W-A-Y-N-E. Hello, this is Weird Al Yankovic, and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne, aren't you? (laughs) 